today and welcome to the final part of your introduction to psychopathology. And in this session, we're going to practice your AO2 skills and make sure that you're able to decode some exam questions ready for when you attempt some in the near future. Let's start by making sure that you're clear on what we mean by AO2 skills. So AO2 skills refer to the ways in which you will demonstrate your knowledge and your understanding through application. For example, when you handle data, apply your knowledge to conversations or to hypothetical scenarios. Uh, and they, they appear quite a bit in each of your exam papers. And there's some other examples on the screen of how you might earn AO2 marks. So let's begin by taking a look at this question on the screen. So Keith is a 50 year old office manager who often has a temper tantrum when things don't go his way at work. When he goes to speak to his colleagues at their desk, he often invades their personal space by standing too close to them, which makes them feel awkward. When one of his team informed him their brother had died, he laughed out loud. And the question underneath, identify one definition of abnormality that could be applied to define Keith's behaviour. Justify your selection. Explain one limitation of abnormal behaviour in this way, and that question's worth six marks. Now, you won't be able to answer this question, not at the moment, but you will do in the near future. But what is good practice and a good habit to get into is to start decoding the questions and identifying where your skills are being tested. So in this question, we can see that the AO2 skills are being tested and you can see this in the red highlighted area. So even if we can't answer the question, we don't know the content, what we can start looking at is which parts of the question should I be picking up? Which parts of this question is triggering my AO2 skills? And we can see that there clearly on the screen. So over to you now. Read everything that's on the screen and see if you can spot in the question where the hint is that you're being tested on AO2. Pause the video for three minutes while you make your decision. OK, so hopefully you spotted that it was here, this part in red. And this is AO2 because it's asking you to justify your choice. So once we've identified what mental disorder the doctor is most likely to diagnose Deborah with, where we're able to justify our choice is by reading the scenario, the little story about Deborah, and pulling out maybe some quotes or some key bits of information that tell us exactly why we think Deborah is suffering this particular mental disorder. So that's our direct application to a scenario. Let's try that again. Pause the video for another three minutes while you read the question and identify where in the question this time it becomes clear that you do need to demonstrate your AO2 skills. OK, and on the screen, you can see in red that it's this part of the question where it should be clear to you that your AO2 skills are being assessed. And it's worth noting here that if you don't fulfill the AO2 element of a question in psychopathology or in any other topic on your course, then it would be impossible to reach full marks due to partial performance. One more task then to finish your introduction to psychopathology off. Now, in the exam, you can also achieve AO2 credit for things like handling data, and this exam style question is quite typical of what can be asked in the context of psychopathology. So pause for five minutes, read the question and spend some time drawing conclusions from the graph that's on the screen. Hopefully you were able to spot a few trends in the graph and in the data. So here's a couple of examples to take away. So we can see on the graph that the combination of medication and CBT is the best approach. 33% of people recover. We can also spot that CBT is more effective on its own than medication is. Our final example, small percentage recover without treatment, suggesting that other things are influencing recovery. So overall, what you want to do in these types of questions is keep focused on the conclusions drawn rather than just the data.